Hi, I'm Jill and I'm going to show you how to upcycle jars, jam jars, to make them into garden lanterns. What I've done here is I've gone on the computer and I've printed off a picture of a bee, which is a nice thing to make a lantern, put it in your garden, there's bees all around and it just makes a nice garden little thing. So, we put that in the jar that I've cleaned because it must be clean but I've cleaned it with a spectacle cleaner which you can buy a whole pack of them for a pound and it makes the surfaces really clean which is what you need so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get any felt pen that will go on glass there's nothing special and I'm going to outline the bumblebee you don't have to be too precious so as long as it's within the shape it doesn't have to be exact and if you do it wrong you can just wipe it off with a cloth anyway and i thought it'd be nice to do bumblebees because they're people's favorites nowadays so as you can see i'm going around all the shape and you won't really see this felt pen once you've put a liner on it so if I pull that out, you can see the shape of the bumblebee. Now I'm going to line that out with liner. So what I'm actually using, and these are my favourites, and you can get any type, all the shops sell all different types that are air dried, etc. Et but with Vitria 160, you can put this in the oven once you've done your jar. You can put the jar in the oven on 160 from cold, just put your jar in there 160 for 40 minutes and it makes it dishwasher proof washing proof and the uh, paint won't come off and these are the paints that I'm using which are the same it's a range so you've got liners paints frosting and if you look down here there's a whole range of colors that that you can get there's blues red iridescent silver and they're all bakeable you put them in the oven once you've finished your painting and they'll come out glossy and dishwasher proof right so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get my liner and if you look at this it's very much like paint <laughs> with a big blob it's very much like paint and you have to kind of use it like a pencil but squeeze it at the same time so I'm now going to show you how to and the idea of this is once this is dried you can colour it in with your paints so you can either just paint or you can kind of put the paints in so they flow into the little crevice and then when all of that's dry that's when you bake them and then you've got your lantern for your garden. I'm showing you this one first. The next one we'll do has got a bit more colour on it and I'll be showing you how to do that next. But this is the basics. And if you do this wrong, you can wash it off. Or you can just wipe it off with a piece of cloth if, you're, if you've got a piece of cloth handy. And then you wait for that to dry and then you can colour it in with the glass paints. Right, because it takes about an hour to dry, I've already done one, so that we can, I can show you how to colour it in. And I've done one on either side so that when you put your light in, or your candle, you can have a candle in these, they don't, the glass won't break because I've tested all of this, or one of those electric little battery candles. So now I'm going to show you how to colour this in. So first of all, I think I'll colour the yellow in first. So the best brushes to use for glass paints is really soft brushes because if you use a hard brush, you'll get lines in your paint. And I like to wet it first, have a bit of cloth handy, and then um, start 
you could what's called flood your colour which is just plop it in and it will spread out but I prefer to paint it so it doesn't take so long to dry and you can go over it again because this is a bit thin so I'm going to put a bit more in because you can kind of see little dots on it and I didn't go right up to the edges but the good thing about this paint is until you put it in the oven it's really easy to get off and even when it's dry you can scrape it off with something like this you can like scrape it a little bit if you've gone over the edges if it's dry so that's the first bit so we've painted in the yellow now normally you'd wait a little while for this to dry but because we've got the lines are all dried I'm gonna now paint the black so I can show you the next bit so now I'm gonna wash my brush make sure you wash your brush because you will get the different paint going on your brush and then it will make all your paints all a funny color etc etc so what I'm gonna do now is paint the black the best thing to do is try and keep it flat so that it doesn't drip out because it's very as you can see it's very loose paint so it can drip out of where it's where you're painting it now I normally put it so it can't move put two things next to it now normally you'd wait for all of this to dry but to show you what I'm doing and the next one would have white on the wings so I'll just do one wing because it's um, flooded a bit so but you wouldn't do it this quick you have to what I normally do to make sure that it's dry I normally do about three jars all at the same time and do a bit of each jar and then wait for that to dry and then when that's dry and do another bit of another jar and it seems to work better you're not hanging around oh, I could do the other wing you're not hanging around waiting for the bits to dry because you're doing a few at a time so what you do now is you wait for all of that to dry it and you have to wait 24 hours before you can bake it right this is the finished product I waited for 24 hours then I put it on an old baking tray put it in a cold oven and then put the temperature on for 160 for 40 minutes and then when it was cooked the colours come out a lot glossier and they're more see-through and it makes a lot of difference once you've baked it and this is a finished product and we can put a light in there a candle and I'll show you what it looks like later because if I put a candle in there now you won't see it 